You might be surprised to know that some of the internet's most shocking and disturbing videos actually come from Facebook. Yes, this boomer tier dinosaur of a social media site houses some of the internet's most unhinged posters, and it's only gotten worse with the rise of Facebook Live. From users live streaming themselves running from police, to Joker impersonators charged with issuing terroristic threats and wanted criminals busted while flexing live, I'd like for you all to join me as we explore the psychotic world of Facebook video and live streams. Before we begin, I have to address something extremely important. It's about this watch that I've been wearing in videos for the last year or so. A watch by Holzkern, today's sponsor. Holzkern makes specialized watches and jewelry for both men and women using natural materials such as wood and stones. As a result, they've got some extremely unique pieces. I've actually been paid to promote Holzkern once before, but I've just been kind of wearing their product ever since because I liked it so much. Like I wear this out in my day-to-day -day life literally every day. I wanted to get something new in rotation with this stainless steel watch, so I had Holzkern send me a black watch, more specifically the Black Vulture watch, made from ash gray brush stainless steel, and it has a lead wood band. It's a beautiful piece, and I'm excited to wear it out in future videos here on the channel. Holzkern, in addition to watches, has some sharp-looking accessories as well, like this Supremum ring. It's made of marble and stainless steel. Holzkern was kind enough to send me both variations of the ring, so I can pair it with each of the watches that I have now. I've got plenty of compliments from my Holzkern swag in the past, and I'm looking forward to receiving even more. So if you're looking for a new piece, crafted in small batches, will last you a good while and has a two-year warranty all with it, Holzkern is the place to check out. Holzkern offers free express worldwide shipping from beautiful Vienna, and custom fees are on them. Products typically will arrive in two to five business days. You guys can go to holzkern.com slash wavywebsurf and use code wavy at checkout to get 10% off store wide. Facebook Live has seen many perpetrators streaming their own vehicular escape attempts from police, but few will ever top the case of Ryan Stiles, a man who went on a rampage from behind the wheel of a Jeep Cherokee, driving onto a public occupied beach and sending beachgoers running for their lives. In Clearwater, Florida, a 27-year-old man named Ryan Stiles, who worked as an arborist in Tampa, was dealing with some legal issues. On May 27, 2017, he had been arrested for allegedly drunkenly assaulting a police officer and was facing jail time. Shortly after his arrest, this man would actually be bailed out by a woman who he was renting a room from, bailing him out under the promise that he would stay out of trouble in the future. Obviously, that's not what happens. Yet tensions would grow when the woman found out Stiles had still been driving with a revoked license, and on July 20th of 2017, she had threatened to rescind his bail if he didn't go see the public defender. This seemingly put Stiles into a mental tailspin. The guy had a lot of anger issues, and at the time he felt like the walls were closing in on him and that he was about to go back to jail. After getting out of jail, Stiles seemingly snaps. It's at this moment that he decides to pack up all of his things and load them into his Jeep Cherokee. He would then upload a video claiming that he was going to crash his vehicle into a police cruiser. And if he wasn't able to do that, he's going to crash his car into the Clearwater Police Building. In his own words, he described this violent plan as his one last hurrah. This last hurrah would be a crazed and drunken rampage that put many lives in danger. Styles began his violent speeding venture at US-19 and Gulf to Bay Boulevard and sped down a Clearwater beach while chugging Canadian mist whiskey, all while running over chairs and umbrellas and screaming curse words at horrified beachgoers who were fleeing for their lives. People were scrambling to avoid the frenzied and inebriated driver. During all of this, Ryan Stiles was actually live streaming the whole thing. At around 4.30 p.m., dispatchers were getting calls from people around the country that were viewing this Facebook Live. <laughs> Oh shit, 
protect the turtles. Oh, shit, man. Goddamn. Woo! The chaotic live stream lasted for around five minutes in total. Officers keen to stop the rampaging man set out to catch him. They first made contact with him at South Myrtle Avenue and Court Street and were unsuccessful in trying to stop him there. Styles continued over the Memorial Causeway right onto a public beach, with officers remaining in pursuit, following him onto the sand at Papaya Street just north of the Hilton Clearwater Beach Resort and Spa. He was driving on an occupied beach full of people who were desperately jumping out of the way of this maniac. Reports say that near the end of the chase, Styles found himself cornered at Caladesi Island by authorities and basically had to make a decision, drive his vehicle into the water or surrender right then and there. Luckily for officers, he did the latter and submitted to the police and was arrested and charged with a DUI, driving with a suspended license, reckless driving, fleeing and eluding, hit and run with property damage, felony criminal mischief, and threatening a public servant. Miraculously, no one was injured during this disastrous event. Many were able to narrowly avoid the man's out-of-control vehicle just by, like, jumping and, you know, tumbling out of the way. One almost victim was a woman and her baby who was in a playpen, and she just happened to, like, move the pin out of the way at the right time. As for the Facebook live stream, in one night, it went from 3,000 views to 42,000 views and 500 shares, and the YouTube re-upload has over 68,000 views. This dude was quite cantankerous, even when behind bars. While still arrested and in a holding cell, Styles actually used his belt to shatter a door's glass window. And at some point, it's reported that he even tried to lure officers into some sort of trap. He would later go on to say that while he was driving on the beach, he stuck close to the sand dunes and blared his horn because he didn't want to kill anybody, and that his actual intentions were to end his life by either crashing his jeep into the officers or by getting shot by their weapons. Quote, I was hoping it was going to end a lot differently. My intentions were to take my own life. When asked why he live streamed the incident, he told reporters that he wanted to show friends and family that his life wasn't as nice as it seemed on social media. So I guess you could say it was like a cry for help. But I mean, dog, there's so many other ways that you could have gone about doing that. Like you could have just gotten fucking therapy, dude. I wanted to show the world that I'm not as perfect as everyone thinks I am. I'm just a troubled man trying to keep myself together. He added that he deeply regretted his actions too. In September of 2017, Styles pled guilty to the charges of fleeing and eluding criminal mischief, DUI, drinking with a revoked or suspended license, reckless driving, and leaving the scene of a crash involving property damage, and was sentenced to 13 months in prison. As of the present day, it seems that Ryan is out of jail and working again as an arborist, and he actually has his own business in Tampa, Florida. So, good for him. Hopefully, he stays off the beaches. The reason I have your attention is to end the epidemic of opiate addiction and heroin overdoses, which are plaguing our society. It's a leading killer in people under 50 years of age. Cold shock resuscitation can save a life. With the rise of mass shootings, law enforcement has adopted a no-nonsense policy when it comes to online threats, regarding gun violence in particular. Like, it's now easier than ever to get thrown in jail because of comments that you post to the internet. Facebook is home to many threats, but one of the strangest came from a man wearing full-on Joker makeup and costume. This is the story of Jeremy, aka Cloudy the Clown. Meet 50-year-old Jeremy Garnier from University City, Missouri. Jeremy had quite a few run-ins with the law during his younger years. He is a convicted felon who had been arrested in the 1980s for robbing a credit union to support a crack habit. Addiction caused turmoil in his life for some time, but eventually the man got clean and lived life on the straight and narrow path. In recent years, Jeremy has turned his focus to entertainment, becoming a musician, battle rapper, and performance artist, creating a character known as Cloudy the Clown. As this clown, he would dress up in zany and crazy costumes with Joker-style makeup and walk around the city of St. Louis attempting to entertain. Hi, how you doing, ladies and gentlemen? You know what time it is. Cloudy the Clown up in this bitch. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna log out of here? We're gonna log out there, and we're gonna log in here, and we're gonna go share this video. 
is what we're gonna do. He claimed to be doing this bizarre Joker act for clout and internet fame, but also had the goal of spreading awareness about the opioid epidemic and how drugs could ruin your life, something that he had experienced firsthand in the past with crack. Yes, I am that bored, and you know what I'm doing though. 420, I'm raising the awareness of opiate addiction and heroin overdoses, one live feed at a time. So understand that yes, I'm chasing clout. Yes, I'm doing this for attention, but the attention I seek is to take over the world with a new concept. That opiates aren't cool. Heroin's for fools that want to die soon. While he was quite an eccentric and unnerving figure, Jeremy and his Cloudy the Clown persona seemed harmless and well-meaning on the surface. But a live stream published shortly before the pandemic in 2020 had police questioning this man's intentions. Trouble would begin in March of 2020 when Jeremy live streamed himself from his house while dressed up as Heath Ledger's version of the Joker from The Dark Knight. Alongside his anti-opioid spiel, he would say a few things on this Facebook live stream that had folks raising eyebrows. For example, in the beginning of his stream, Jeremy seems to suggest that he is going to go on a killing spree. I'm going to start killing people until this reaches a thousand. And once it reaches a thousand, I'm going to go out in public. Jeremy also gives a nod to the Dark Knight movie theater mass shooting that happened in Aurora, Colorado back in 2012. We're not going to go any movie theaters. We're going to go totally unarmed because we don't want to alert the authorities into thinking that we might be on an actual rampage because there are those of you that would like to see the Joker go down as well as Cloudy the Clown. Some pretty edgy stuff, but look, given Jeremy's persona, I really doubt that he had any serious intentions of hurting people or shooting up anything. But with the climate of mass shootings and previous instances of seemingly ironic threats posted online leading to violence, you could bet your bottom dollar that the po-po were all over this shit. And the clips just get worse and worse for Jeremy. In another Facebook stream, Jeremy records himself monologuing as he drives towards the Galleria Mall in St. Louis, Missouri. Seemingly on some sort of trolling mission that's to take place at the mall, Jeremy says that he would feel sorry for any security guards who attempted to remove him because he would kill them if they tried. <sighs> yes, indeed, it's fun time, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to have fun at the Galleria Shopping Center. I feel sorry for any security guards that may try to remove me from the premises. I'm not having any of that. I will kill them. And I'm serious. Despite his ominous live stream prior, after Jeremy arrived at the mall, everything seemed pretty innocuous with the clown. Jeremy freestyle rapped for one onlooker while taking a selfie with another. It was just a bit, and he was there to entertain. I'm something similar to a psychotic, I got a neurotic twitch. I'm that demon screaming man, fuck that bitch. Talking about them demons screaming in my head, they singing lullabies. I'm slinging yeast on the street so my profits can rise. I'm a surprise, surprise, got you acting like Goma. I'm slinging homers like Albert Pujols, motherfucker, I'm on a whole different level. I'm a beast, look at the fangs on me. The cracker with the thacker got one of them things on me. I'm gonna explode, unload, reload, get load, sit in the middle of the street to the police show. And then explode, unload, reload, you know, you heard the same shit two lines before. So unless you wasn't listening, which I doubt very seriously, he had no problems hearing me. They fear me, take a look at him, you ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till I throw the hook at him. Goodbye. Some viewers in Facebook live chat who had been watching his disturbing monologue prior though were convinced that he was up to something and reportedly called the mall to warn them about Jeremy. He had around 2,000 people viewing him at the time, so potentially a lot of mall callers. Because of these calls, he would be approached by a large group of officers who asked if he had made any violent threats, to which Jeremy denied. He was then asked to leave the premises and promptly complied. So a seemingly frustrated Jeremy gets back in his car, starts driving off, and boots up a Facebook Live to blow off some steam. In this broadcast, he told his viewers that he was going to find out who reported him to the cops and that he was going to find the reporter's IP address and hang out with them because he had no intentions of hurting anybody. That's right. I'm gonna find out which one of you hating motherfuckers reported me because it's gonna get traced. Your IP address. And then I'm gonna show up and I'm gonna turn out. Yeah, baby, we're gonna party all night. We're gonna dance like there's no tomorrow. 
because I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm trying to raise the awareness of opiate addiction and heroin overdose, which is plaguing our society. It would become more and more obvious with time that Jeremy's whole bit was just a gag, a edgy Heath Ledger Joker parody. But we must remember, the cops, they don't play around with this kind of stuff, dudes. You remember the Minecraft threat guy, right? Later in the aforementioned live stream, Jeremy enters a restaurant called the Blueberry Hill, which is located in St. Louis, Missouri. Jeremy then proceeded to show his viewers the pictures and collections that the restaurant had on display, while also talking to viewers about how the opioid crisis was causing many to die, urging those watching not to do drugs. But the reason I have your attention is to end the epidemic of opiate addiction and heroin overdoses, which are plaguing our society. It's a leading killer in people under 50 years of age. Cold shock resuscitation can save a life. When you share this video, let them know that the Joker ain't joking around when it comes to serious addiction. You need to leave that stuff alone. Inspire the children not to do it. After that, while in character, Jeremy, of course, jokes about killing people. And kill a few people while you're at it. Uh, a Sprite. Sprite? Yeah, I don't drink alcohol. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you know, I can't, can't be inebriated when I'm planning on, you know, killing a bunch of people. <laughs> it's, not, it's not something you can do. I'm live on Facebook right now. I've got like uh, nearly 2,000 people watching. I guess it was at this moment that law enforcement decided Jeremy had issued his legal limits of threats in a 24-hour period and decided to sting his clown ass. Seconds later, while he was telling people at the bar about how he had been previously accosted by police earlier in the night, officers seemingly materialize out of nowhere, entering the establishment and approaching Jeremy, placing him under arrest and alleging him of making online threats. How you doing? That's wonderful. Ooh, my keys. I was just at the Galleria Shopping Center. I walked in there, was in there less than five minutes and five SUV police officers pulled up and said, we received warning, there they are right there. We reserved warning that you were threatening to do something. I said, I'm not armed and I weigh 150 pounds. I don't have no weapons on me. I'm not gonna do nothing. You got me messed up. Except all these times. Don't appreciate that, right? Don't touch me. 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 It's all good. I'm not resisting. Don't touch me. When in custody, that be very ill. Jeremy would be charged with the felony, with cops believing his allusions to violence being credible and actionable. The guy was arrested and jailed at one of the worst times imaginable too, as unfortunately for Jeremy, the already slow legal process had been slowed even further due to courts shutting down for COVID. Jeremy's future would be in limbo. Though despite the turmoil with the courts caused by the pandemic, he managed to get out of jail in short time, as he would await the outcome of his charges thereafter. Two years later, in January of 2022, his case was actually dismissed due to prosecution not being able to find a key witness for the grand jury. Yet, the very next day, it would strangely be reinstated after the state had found other means of pursuing Jeremy for his alleged threats. Jeremy was taken back into custody and was now being held on a $75,000 bail and was ordered to stay away from the Blueberry Hill restaurant by the court. He would spend a total of five months in jail. On September 16th of 2022, Jeremy was sentenced to 60 days in jail after pleading guilty to a misdemeanor charge of making a terroristic threat that had been reduced from a felony. Jeremy would say that he had never intended to make any sort of actionable threat, but pled guilty so that he could avoid many more months in prison. Quote, I was talking like the Joker. I was in character. Everybody knew that it was a joke and that I had no intentions of following through with the threat. Luckily for Jeremy, the 60 days in jail was declared time served and he was allowed to leave and only given two years of probation. On Facebook, he says, finally free. In February of 2024, while still on probation, Jeremy had tested positive for marijuana and was arrested again, but was released shortly after and agreed to see a court-ordered psychiatrist for what was described as, quote, a marijuana problem. 
As of the current day, Jeremy seems to be doing pretty well. He's still on Facebook and performs live music with a band, calling himself Uncle Dub in this band. While Jeremy's Facebook videos were disturbing to some, it appears that his threats were baseless and it was all just a character with him portraying a Dark Knight style Joker. I wish this guy nothing but the best of luck going forward as it seems that he's trying to put forward a positive message. Get this some money, I gonna fail if you broke out here, man. You hear me? I gonna fail if you broke out here, man. Straight up, man. Just catch up, man. Duval County, Jacksonville, Florida. It's one of the most crime infested sectors of the state and it's considered the murder capital of Florida. Duval! F the Jags tighten up. It's a home to a lot of gang warfare as well as drill rap rivalries. There's an abundance of idiotic bravado with many taking to the internet to boast about their street crime successes, showing off cash and jewelry, bragging about what illegal acts they've committed, and some even have the gall to talk about alleged murders that they had carried out. In this day and age, it's not uncommon for a criminal to brag about their delinquent lifestyle in front of everyone on the web. However, what is uncommon is when one is arrested while in the process of doing so. And this is exactly what happens in this story. A guy getting caught by the cops while lacking on Facebook Live. 22-year-old Breon Hollings of Jacksonville, Florida had been a career criminal with many previous run-ins with law enforcement, being convicted on drug charges, trespassing, criminal mischief, and child abuse. None of this stopped him, however, from flaunting on the internet, specifically Facebook Live in early June of 2017. Around this time, Hollings took to Facebook Live to stream himself arrogantly flaunting his wealth, showing off small stacks of cash all the while incoherently mumbling to the camera in gibberish. So much of this shit called, man. We get his money over here, man. Y'all already know the story, man. We the guys, man. All the people, bro, man. Hey, that one time I didn't fucking cut on my shit. Y'all already know the story, man. What he didn't know, however, is that while he was flexing for his stream, the authorities were outside circling his house, readying themselves to enter and bust this guy for a prior crime. One minute into the live stream, everything seems to change as Breon appears to pause after hearing some commotion outside of his house. Turns out authorities were already within the vicinity as they can be heard announcing their presence along with their search warrant. They then hurled smoke grenades into the premises and entered. Hollings attempted to flee but was arrested moments later. Man, this shit, this shit don't stop, man. We got, we got this shit, man. This shit don't stop, man. Shit don't stop, man. It's the first one. Went... After rummaging around the location, authorities discovered a handgun, ammunition, crack cocaine, oxycodone pills, and drug paraphernalia within his trailer. As a result, Breon was charged with possession of a weapon or ammunition as a convicted Florida felon, possession of paraphernalia for the manufacture or delivery of drugs, possession of a controlled substance, and possession of cocaine, and he was given a $425,000 bond. The police would later claim that the live stream actually had nothing to do with tipping them off to this guy's location or anything. They had already planned to search his house that day and the stream was just a coincidence. Many would see the event transpire and others would flock to the internet to watch the replay of the VOD, as a re-upload of the video was put up on YouTube and has over 2.6 million views. While Breon was facing quite a bit of charges, it seemed that more would come as he would also be charged with murder. On 4-20 of 2017, a few months before Breon was arrested, it's believed that he was involved with the drug deal gone awry. 28-year-old Eric Shea White and his girlfriend, 25-year-old Summer Wilbanks, arranged a drug deal with Breon at Amazon Avenue in Jacksonville, Florida, just three blocks from Hollings' home. 
There, four men approached Eric's vehicle. Reportedly, White was planning on giving Hollings fake money along with caffeine pills, attempting to rip off Hollings and his crew. But it didn't take long for the man to catch on, and the couple was physically confronted. One of the four then proceeded to pull the girlfriend out of the car by her hair and put a gun to her head. Eric White then attempted to flee the scene while another pulled out his gun and fired 15 shots into the car, killing Eric White. It is to note that the girlfriend did not see who shot and killed her boyfriend, but due to her being part of this drug deal, she was actually arrested and charged with third degree murder. After her arrest, she named Breon Hollings as one of the men that was there, and thus he was charged with second degree murder and aggravated assault. On June 24th of 2019, a jury would find Breon Hollings guilty of second degree murder and aggravated assault, and the felon faced a maximum of life in prison. His defense attempted to appeal the verdict, filing a motion for a new trial, claiming the jury's verdict was inconsistent, but that was denied. So Hollings was sentenced to 25 years in prison for the second degree murder and five years for the aggravated assault. And with that, a young man who had once been hilariously arrested on a Facebook live stream now found himself facing decades behind bars, and that's where he's at now. The Mason County judge tells us Miller is suspected of stealing a truck and guns and leading law enforcement officers on a slow speed chase that ended near Waco. This is probably one of the more bizarre stories from today's docket. It involves a mentally disturbed arsonist who burned down not one but two buildings in one night. One of these buildings being an over 100 year old historic monument. And to top all of this off, he tried to run from police and live streamed his escape attempt to Facebook. The Mason County Courthouse was a 111 year old courthouse that had been built in 1909. And in 2021, there were plans for renovating this old building. But unfortunately, those renovations would never come to fruition, as on February 4th of 2021, at around 10 p.m., the courthouse had mysteriously caught fire. By 1.03 in the morning, the building was completely engulfed in flames, a near total loss. The inferno causing about 20 million in damages, and the historic site was basically reduced to rubble. The only thing left of the structure was the courthouse's outer rock wall structure. Now curiously, also the same night before the courthouse fire, there was a residential home about 1.2 miles away from it that was also mysteriously burnt down. Quite interesting to say the least, right? Authorities found evidence that these fires may have been the work of an arsonist, and soon became certain both fires were related. They began searching for potential suspects, as the community in Mason, Texas demanded justice be dealt for the burning of their beloved historic site. The next day, authorities would find their strongest lead during the early morning of February 5th of 2021. At around 10.40 a.m., Georgetown police attempted a routine traffic stop on a Ford F-350 on Interstate 35 northbound in Williamson County, but the pickup truck refused to halt for the cops and fled the scene. Troopers then got involved and took over the pursuit in Gerald, Texas. The driver of the vehicle was 45-year-old Nicholas Miller, who was a repeat offender. And while Miller was in the process of trying to evade police, the man decided to go live on Facebook. During this psychotic live stream, Miller proclaims that Mark Zuckerberg is a punk bitch, all the while police helicopters are pursuing his vehicle overhead. Mark Zuckerberg, you punk bitch. Yeah, all that mother correspondence and messenger, you recognize that shit? Hang yourself, Mark, punk bitch. Most of the stream consists of Miller ranting about how life isn't fair along with him talking about his failed relationship with his family. He babbles on about how great of a father he was and urged those watching to make sure that his two sons were safe after whatever happens in this scenario. At one point, Miller apparently gave out the username and password to his Apple and iCloud account and spoke to a friend on video who said he wanted them to make sure that his children would be safe. As for the suspicions of him being the culprit behind the arson attacks, Miller can be heard saying, I ain't hurt nobody, I just burnt a house down. And he says, ain't hurt nobody. 
uh, just burned a house down. Miller continued to avoid the authorities until he was south of Waco at around 11.40 a.m. when his vehicle was spiked multiple times. The guy eventually decided to pull over and surrender to authorities, but he wasn't finished with his live stream, as he would continue to live stream the entire arrest process as well. At one point, this situation gets pretty tense when Miller admits to having a firearm on him, but luckily nobody was harmed and Miller peacefully surrendered to the authorities. Well, this is going in, but I guarantee it. We'll see if I, if I pull over with my hands high. See what happens there. Because they tell me my kids are all right. Open your car, driver. That means I got to drop my hands. Y'all understand that, right? That means I got to drop my hands. Got to. I got a gun. I got a gun. I'm not going to. Fuck. The man was booked in McLennan County Jail and was charged with felony evading arrest with a motor vehicle and unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon. And later, it would be confirmed by police that he was also arrested because of his involvement in that Mason County Courthouse fire. He was the arsonist. On January 23rd of 2024, a trial would be held against Nicholas where the State Fire Marshal's office testified against Miller, claiming that ignitable fluids were found at the scene of the crime, determining the fire to be an arson. Nicholas would be found guilty by a jury and one month later on February 28th of 2024, the arsonist was sentenced to 75 years in prison on two charges of arson of a habitation one for the burning of the courthouse and the other for the residential house that was ignited in the area on the same day. Other charges included burglary of a building, unlawful use of a vehicle, and unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon. As for the courthouse, it is being rebuilt and renovated to look like how it was originally back in 1909. The dogs appear to break the pig's legs and rip off its ear. The women can be heard coaxing the dogs. Bye. Yeah. Do you see the pig's back? This next story is one involving ignorance and animal abuse with two individuals callously killing an animal for absurdly stupid purposes and even went on to showcase their act on Facebook thinking people would find it funny or that they would be proud of them. This is the story of the Facebook pig hunters. In April of 2011, in Vero Beach, Florida, the mother-daughter team of Janice and Ashley Ramirez reportedly bought a pig from a local farm. Unfortunately for this animal, they had no plans of adopting it as a pet. They had intentions to kill the creature in cruel fashion. The duo decided to use this animal as helpless prey for their dogs, with the stated goal of having the canines kill the pig so that the dogs could learn how to hunt. Now, if that were truly the case, there wasn't much sport to be had because the snout of the pig had been taped up and its limbs were somewhat bound as well. So it's not like it could maneuver to escape or fight back. The hogtied pig was released into a fenced in enclosure with nowhere to run. And the two women sick their dogs onto the helpless animal, commanding the hounds to attack. At first, the dog seemed reluctant to mess with the pig, but after some coaching and jeering from the redneck ringleaders, these canines obeyed their owners and lunged for the pig. Now it's at this point where the mother, 55-year-old Janice Ramirez, feeling like the mauling was funny, decides to pull her phone out and record the animal cruelty, all while 21-year-old Ashley continues to provoke the canines into violently assaulting the defenseless animal. Detectives say Janice held the camera, recording nearly six minutes of the attack. Most of the video is too graphic to show, as the dogs appear to break the pig's legs and rip off its ear. The women can be heard coaxing the dogs. Buy him! Yeah. Do you see the pig's back? At one point in the video, one of them calls it a massacre. They can be heard giggling and laughing about the hog's leg or legs being broken. Did you hear that crunch? One of them asked the other. Afterwards, the ladies discuss whether to feed the pig to the dogs raw or cooked. 
The footage itself was around six minutes long, and for whatever reason, this mother and daughter duo of animal abusers decided it would be a good idea to publish the footage to Facebook so that their friends and family could watch it. You know, they were proud of the content. God damn, man, Facebook. It's a place to go to argue politics, keep up with friends, and post animal mauling videos, I guess. On Facebook, Ashley would post under the video, giving some behind the scenes context in regard to their preparation for the slaying, stating that the reason for the duct taping of the hog was to protect their dogs from the pig's retaliation, as well as to muffle the animal's scream so it wouldn't attract their neighbors to the obscene operation. Underneath the video, there were around 40 comments, some that were amused by the footage, but there were many that were utterly appalled by it. One of the commenters was so distraught by the video, they recorded the footage from their computer and sent it to the Indian River County Sheriff's Office. This footage was disturbing to the local law enforcement. Some in the force even reportedly stated it was one of the worst cases of animal cruelty that they had ever seen. Quote, you can see the dogs were hesitant at first. They were encouraged by their owners to attack. This is not the type of behavior these dogs normally do. The police then used this as evidence to make an arrest on the mother and daughter duo after a month-long investigation. Then, on May 11th of 2011, both were arrested on felony animal cruelty charges and fighting or baiting animals. They were then each released on a $10,000 bail the next day. The media would attempt to get in touch with the Ramirez's after they had gotten out of jail, but they wouldn't reply to formal interview requests. However, the hog slayers at least once have commented on the matter, you know, attempting to downplay the situation, saying that they had good intentions and were just trying to train the dogs to hunt. Like, bro, that, that's not how that works, man. You train your dog to hunt by training it to fucking hunt, taking it out, doing drills with it, not by throwing a helpless bound pig in the backyard. That, that's just not a thing. Like, I'm from fucking Tennessee and that's not a thing, dude. Local Humane Society workers would unsurprisingly confirm that their actions constituted abuse. It is to note that investigators believe that this was the only time the women had performed a cruel stunt like this, and thankfully it wasn't a habitual practice. Regardless, they would be punished. Many of their dogs, including the one shown in the footage, were taken away, along with 10 pit bull puppies and a chihuahua. Later in March of 2012, Janice and Ashley Ramirez took a plea deal and would be sentenced to two months in jail and 30 months of probation, as well as having to each pay $1,000 to the local Humane Society branch. If Ashley and Janice had kept this hidden, you know, and away from Facebook, they would have completely gotten away with their abuse, but their desire to be the center of attention on the internet ultimately did them in, which will be a common theme in today's video. Anyway, I just did something crazy, man. I just shot my ex-girlfriend in the head, yo. Um, felt like a dream. Like, I never thought I would be that guy. To begin this unsettling chapter, I want to bring your attention to this video right here. It's a short Facebook live broadcast, only a little over a minute long. In this video, a man who looks to be in his early 40s is live on Facebook and is venting to viewers about some pressures in his life. For everybody out there that supported me and really knows what's going on, thank you all. He explains that he's going through a tough custody battle thanks to his ex-wife. He alleges that she's lied about him, claiming that he's a pedophile and molested his children. I'm going through um, having my ex-wife say I molested my children and all kinds of craziness. Been fighting for custody for three years. The man then reveals that he had started dating somebody new recently and that this individual had become pregnant. But the man claims that he had gotten into a big fight with this new partner and says that the first thing she did was threaten to take his unborn child away in a way similar to his ex-wife prior. Meet, you know, and start dating somebody new and she got pregnant. And, um, you know, we got in a fight. First thing she does, threatening that she's going to do the same thing, You're never going to see your kids, blah, blah, blah. It's the holidays, man. I don't have no family, nothing. And that's when the man reveals something truly shocking. To his Facebook Live viewers, he says that he had just shot his ex-girlfriend in the head. 
After explaining his situation, the man says he refuses to go to prison, insinuating that he'd take drastic action to prevent incarceration, adding that the person who started all of the drama in his life was his ex-wife. Anyway, I just did something crazy, man. I just shot my ex-girlfriend in the head, yo. Um, felt like a dream. Like, I never thought I would be that guy. Um, I can't go to prison, so... The person that really started my depression and all of this is my ex-wife. And as a result of this, he admits to planning on killing this woman, then himself. Near the end of the Facebook Live video, it's revealed that he's literally at his ex-wife's front door, and you can slightly see her appear on screen for just a moment. He says to viewers that he's gotta go, puts the phone down, and the video ends with the man saying, today's the day. So, she next and then I'm going to do myself too, but I just wanted to say this to people. Don't play with people's emotions, man. Don't lie on these men. Oh, here's my ex-wife right here. Today's the day. Many people witnessed this Facebook Live and were deeply disturbed unsure of the veracity of his claims of murder. Sadly, it turns out that the live was no joke or barrage of empty threats. He did kill on that day. But before that, let's give some context. The man featured in this Facebook live stream is 44-year-old Rajay Sharif Black, who worked as a nurse anesthetist. And it's at this job that he met his wife, Wendy Natalie Black, who shared the same occupation as him. After their divorce, Rajay would deal with a lot of stress, Court records show that the man had filed a federal lawsuit against the University of Maryland in January of 2021, claiming to have been wrongfully terminated after exposing an unnamed doctor who had allegedly been stashing drugs in his locker. The lawsuit claimed that everyone in the hospital knew that Rajay was the whistleblower and had refused to work with them. He was then fired in April of 2020, and the lawsuit says he was forced to risk his life by working a nursing job, a normal nursing job, in New York during the COVID-19 pandemic. Court records also confirm that Rajay had been ensnared in a custody battle since July of 2018, where there had been filings nearly every month over those years, the most recent filing being in December 7th of 2021. Several domestic violence cases listed against Rajay Black existed as well, with the latest being issued in April of 2020. The stress stemming from this custody battle came to a head on December 11th of 2021, when Rajay Black murdered his ex-girlfriend Tara LeBang in Baltimore. One hour later, Rajay then went on Facebook to admit his crime while standing in front of his ex-wife's apartment in Columbia, Maryland. Moments after this Facebook live stream ends, Rajay fatally shot his ex-wife, Wendy Natalie Black, then turned the gun on himself. Later, the couple's two children would be found unharmed in Rajay's gray BMW outside of his wife's apartment. He actually brought his kids with him. It has been reported that the children did not witness the murders and were placed in a safe environment after the fact. On the morning of December 13th of 2021, Baltimore police identified the body of Tara LeBang, and it was reported that a neighbor's ring camera captured the sound of six gunshots during his attack. An ex-girlfriend who had dated Roger in March of 2019 would say that he had severe depression but never got help for it. And when asked if she was ever afraid of him, she said no and that he was never violent. Many argued online whether Roger was a cruel monster or a victim for losing his children and being pushed to the brink of madness. All that can really be said for certain, though, is that this is a tragic case involving children and is by far one of the most disturbing things ever broadcasted on Facebook Live. Well, you made it to the end. Let me know what you guys thought about this video down below in the comment section and let me know who or what you want me to talk about next. I want to give a major shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys. Wavy Web Surf out. Peace.